Retention of the maxillary complete conventional denture is dependent upon the establishment of a peripheral seal resulting from intimate contact of acrylic resin with tissues of the maxillary arch. Due to volumetric shrinkage of polymerization, the processed denture will lack contact in the broad posterior palate area. To compensate for this distortion, stone is removed from the master cast at the junction between the movable and immovable tissue of the palate, known as the vibrating line. Overextension of the denture in this area results in gagging and loss of retention. Underextension may result in an ill-fitting and unstable maxillary prosthesis. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how the posterior palatal seal area is prepared on the maxillary cast. A companion video further describes in greater detail how this area is defined. Instruments suggested for this exercise are an acrylic burr, a Kingsley scraper, and a number 8 round burr. This is a stone master cast and we are going to mark the fovea palatini in the blue pencil on the cast and we will draw the posterior border of the denture in blue. This posterior border represents the vibrating line which runs from hamular notch to hamular notch about two millimeters anterior to the fovea. The denture base terminates at this line. It does not extend it beyond this line. Now the red pencil is going to be used to outline the posterior palatal seal area. And this hatched area, the stone will be removed and this area will be deepened. And the deepest portion is marked in solid red. The width of this area is maximally about three millimeters, then the depth is about a millimeter and a half. The exact dimensions uh, are noted in a companion video, although the dimensions are somewhat arbitrary. This is a time-tested method, and you will see that I am removing stone and outlining the posterior palatal seal area with a number eight round burr proceeding through the hamular notch about three millimeters. The width of this area is about the width of the number eight round burr and the depth is about half the width of the number eight round burr. And it goes through the hamular notch bilaterally. Now the posterior palatal seal area will be tapered and feathered and we're just outlining that and removing some stone. This stone uh, will be removed and this will be in the denture after it's processed so it needs to be as smooth and neat as you can get it. A Kingsley scraper is then used to smoothen the stone tapering and feathering and smoothening and deepening as you go along. So we're just smoothing that out, tapering it and smoothening. This requires a little bit of persistence uh, and just a repetitive light motion will burnish the plaster and give you a nice smooth result as you go along and you'll get all the nicks and scratches and lumps and bumps until you have a nice well burnished smooth surface. Again, the dimensions mentioned are guidelines to assist you in 
this process. And this is what it looks like with the posterior border marked and the occlusion rim is manufactured on this and this occlusion rim I'm going to mark it with a red pencil in the posterior area and you can note that this area the record base has been overextended that will cause a potential for gagging and looseness and you can see the overextension in the rim itself again another mark is placed and you can see this one is still a little bit overextended as well so we'll take our acrylic burr and make that adjustment now this can be done uh, prior to the try-in then when you do the try-in you can evaluate the extension of the post dam area this posterior palatal seal area you can evaluate that in the mouth and it is important to note that acrylic can be added at some point if you feel like this area is inadequate. It can also be removed. Here the acrylic is being trimmed. This is light cured acrylic base. The posterior base is smoothened and rounded not to interfere with the tongue and you can see the intaglio of the denture. This one does not have the posterior palatal seal area either because it's not on the cast or it was not well adapted. So when you're using light cured acrylic you have to use a little extra caution to make sure it's well adapted. So that's how we do it. Thank you.